and 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 finding out you know what we're laying everybody off. I know they that's how those sick. players. Now, if you were a senior on that team, I mean, you played, you're done. But if you were an underclassman, it was heartbreaking. If you were a coach on that staff, it was heartbreaking. Well, I I have a question. So, being the casual fan that I am, when a college cuts the football program, you would think that's like. They're cutting their lifeline because as you say, football runs the meter. So it's like, if you cut your football program, aren't you like cutting off a lot of donations to your school? Wow. That was a big thing that was going on But they're back now. Yes. All right. That's what I like. Comeback story. It was a rough three-year period, but against all odds. Against all odds. The new administration raised funds to bring back football. (laughs) And this was spearheaded by... Mr. Mark Ingram, the athletics director at University of Alabama, Birmingham. Now, Mark Ingram has been working tirelessly since May 1st, 2015. The Blazers made their triumphant return back on September 2nd. They beat Alabama A&M 38-7. Dang. They lost to Ball State that was on the road. On the road. 51-31. But they returned back to Legion Field in Birmingham this Saturday against Coastal Carolina. But before that game, we go one-on-one with Ingram, talk about all the work he and his staff have done and how good it feels. To be back. To have football back, yes. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Tupac and UAB, straight balling. Mark Ingram, thank you so much for joining us today on Married to the Game. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. First, I got to say congratulations on football being reinstated back at UAB. Been a long time coming, and I think you put in a lot of hard work. So we just want to give you your your props and congratulations for that. I appreciate it. It has been a lot of hard work, but it's been a lot of fun and been well worth it, that's for sure. So what was it like when you woke up that Saturday morning on September 2nd, knowing that this wasn't no ordinary Saturday? There was UAB (laughs) football back at Legion Field. Yeah, it, it, the whole week I kept telling people it felt like I was getting married. It felt <laughs> like we were leading up to a wedding. There were all these details that we're trying to finalize and make sure that we're right. And, um, you know, I was excited about the event. You got this big moment that you've been waiting for for all this time, and it's finally here. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, sort of nervous energy and anxiety and excitement. It's just sort of all rolled into one, but it it very much felt like the day that I got married. You know, I was excited, (laughs) and I was terrified, and I couldn't wait for it to happen, and I couldn't wait for it to be over. (laughs) It was was all of those emotions all at once, and um, but it was a terrific day. Ended up having 45,212 fans, which was our all-time high crowd uh, for a UAB football game. And so, if you put all those things together, and the, the weather was spectacular. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really just could not have been any better. And we won, which is also good. Yeah, the icing on the cake there. What were some of the biggest challenges you face trying to revitalize the program? Well, it feels like it's been five years. It's been two years. But the amount of work that's gone into it, and we immediately went to work with the NCAA on how do we get the team back together? Because there were literally only about 12 football players. We did not want to go the FCS route. We wanted to go straight back to FBS play, Mm -hmm. which was important. And that was important because we wanted to maintain our status with Conference USA as a full league member. So that was important. And it it not only affected football, but it it affected all of our other teams. Conference USA was supportive of of that approach. We, again, we didn't sign anybody in February of 15. Mm -hmm. So we were able to retroactively sign that class. So we, we eventually did sign that class. We just didn't sign them until December. Okay. So we signed a huge class in December at the junior college signing period, but they were all our February signees, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then we signed another class in February of 16. So we added about 50 people over the winter, you know, between December of 15 and February of 16. We added about 50 people pretty quick. Uh, and then we, and then from there we, we, worked as everybody else. We had a a signing class in December of 16 and another signing class in February of 17 to help build the roster and and so on. So, you know, that, but, you know, going through that was a challenge. And we were raising money for a new facility all at the same time. We're telling these recruits, 
I promise we're building it. I promise it, that we're building it. And Coach Clark and I are working to not just him recruit, but at the same time we're designing this building and raising the money. And and uh, we did all that simultaneously, and we moved into that building um, back in the mid mid July. Um, and it's spectacular. I mean, it's a forty six thousand square foot wow. operations facility. That's locker room, training room, weight room offices and meeting rooms for football plus we did uh, uh, what what I would call is the most unique indoor facility in the country which is an open air pavilion so it's a covered field plus we have another full outdoor synthetic field so we ended up with the building and two fields one of which is covered uh, from the rain and and you know and weather so it, it's put us in a position to be more successful than than ever before that's amazing. So what's the buzz like on campus and in Birmingham and throughout the state with the return of UAB football? Yeah, it's electric. I mean, it is absolutely electric, and you can feel it. And, you know, we had to call in reinforcements to our ticket office <laughs> uh, to, to help with, from a customer service standpoint, to manage the people who were walking up to the ticket office to get tickets. I mean, which is a great problem to have, right? That is and, a good uh, problem to have. Yeah, we were thrilled. To, to do that, and um, you know, we've we've set a lot of records here. We, as I said, we had the largest crowd ever at that first game, but we sold more season tickets than ever before. And you know, that's that's important for the sustainability of our program. It's important for you know the financial liability of the program. It's you know, it just when people buy season tickets, they're more committed to being at the game. We've never pre-sold season-long parking passes uh, before, but we did this year. You know, putting that in perspective, uh, it, it's the right kind of progress. It's the right type of statement from the community and, and all of our fans. So what are the expectations for the Blazers this season? Win the national championship. You right. know, that's all. You know, that's, that's all. <laughs> that's that's all. Going. No big deal. You know, I, I mean, I, I think from a team performance standpoint, anybody who's watched us practice would tell you that uh, we're crisp. There's a lot of energy at practice. Uh, there's a lot of focus. The team is focused. They they practice hard. Well, you know what, Mark? As a college football fan, it was very sad. And I have no ties or connections to UAB, but it was very sad when news broke that the team was being disbanded. And as a college football fan, on the flip side, I'm ecstatic and so happy when I heard of the return. And now that you guys are, you know, you got the ball rolling just looking forward to bigger and better things. And got to wish you, you and all of your staff at UAB, a big congratulations and, and best of luck and keep it going, man. Really happy about yeah, it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, I, I was at another institution where we eliminated seven sports, and it's it's one of the most difficult things that you deal with. Um, it's a it's become unfortunately a reality of our business. Yes. You know, we're we're not really a business, we're an enterprise with, with some business principles and the competitiveness, um for particularly financial between the haves and the have nots has become greater and greater every year. Yeah. And uh, you know, coaches are measured by wins and losses. They're not measured by anything else. You gotta be able to provide them the resources that they need to be successful. And so um, yeah, of course, it was a difficult decision at the time. Interestingly, it was the right decision. And that's hard for people to hear, but everybody here, even privately, will say, you know what, eliminating football at UAB is the best thing that ever happened to football at UAB because it rallied the community in a way they'd never rallied before. Didn't we think? raised money wow. that we'd never raised before. I could see we that. We raised more than $44 million in two years. Okay, I... We were averaging about $1.3 to $1.5 million a year in fundraising. We were over $44 million in two years. And, and while it was extraordinarily difficult for those involved, we wouldn't be where we are today without it. You could not have planned it that way. Yes. It wasn't like there was a roadmap for that. Yeah. But in doing it, it made everybody say, whoa, wait a minute. We didn't know that this was the kind of help you needed. We didn't realize how dire straits were. You know how how this was. What can we do to help? And the community rallied, and and here we are. And, and our president uh, had the courage to bring it back uh, because we had the funds available finally to make, to do it the right way, not to limp along, kicking the can down the road, uh, just just hoping for average. You know, now we wake up every day with an expectation of greatness. 
We wake up every day with an expectation we want to go and win a championship. And now we can. Well, Mark, I know you're a very busy man. Thank you so much for joining us on Married to the Game. We got some Blazers fans. We're here in Atlanta. And I know the, the UGA guys and the Georgia Tech guys might not like it, but at Married to the Game, because of the situation, you got some Blazers fans over here with us. <laughs> we appreciate it. We'd love to have you. Come on over and see us play Coast to Carolina. Okay, you remember last month when we aired the piece about the racial tension mm -hmm. going on in Charlottesville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about how all that hateful drama altered practice schedules and, and scrimmages at University of Virginia and, yeah, and Charlottesville High School. Yeah, were shut down. Okay, now fast forward one month later, all the major news cameras are gone, the reporters are gone. Are gone. Are gone. But we're still keeping our tabs on what's going on in that beautiful city. For the outside looking in, you're just going to know it's the University of Virginia, the Cavaliers, their beautiful campuses there, and then Charlottesville High School. But sports helps heal a lot of wounds. It does. It and, really does. And it unites the masses. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Republican, Democrat, atheist, churchgoer every Sunday, whatever. I have noticed that, that sports does heal wounds. And for some reason, it does bring people together. Rodney Red knows all about how sports unifies people. He's the athletic director at Charlottesville High School. We dive deep with him on how sports has played a role in dealing with race relations in that beautiful city. Hey, what's up, Rodney? Thank you for joining us on Married to the Game. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Talk to us about how sports is providing some sense of healing and a return to normalcy within the city. Within the city, definitely. Uh, you know, sports and school in general, uh, you know, provide our children with, you know, consistency and, and, and with the routine. And definitely, as, as you said before, definitely provides a source of healing. Um, you know, our students, I, 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 you know, I'll take my hats off to them. They've been great since they've been back in school. Our, our school spirit is at an all-time high. Having somewhere to go on a Friday night, like a football game or a Tuesday night volleyball or field hockey game, uh, it definitely, I think, is a, is, a, is a healthy way to spend your time. And, 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 and our community seems to be embracing that. What was it like or what were some of the students saying when school opened up about all of the drama that happened back in August? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, they, they seem to be very resilient. And, and, and when I first got into this business about 15 years ago, someone told me that that they've done a great job of, of just kind of approaching business as usual. I haven't noticed a change uh, in, in, in their behavior, uh, but just just the fact that, uh, you know, they've almost seemed to kind of, the glue is almost tightened up a little bit, if that makes sense. Did you have to say anything specifically to you? your athletic staff about how to handle situations or how to address questions if they arise? Just to be sensitive and, and, and empathetic uh, if, if people are going through things and, and to make sure that we understand how to have a healthy dialogue. Uh, I will say that one thing our state association is doing, um, the Virginia High School League, is they have put a very strong policy against racial slurs um, on the playing field and playing court. And uh, it, it, it now warrants an immediate uh, suspension if, if, if that type mm. of activity is taking place. So um, it, it was nice to see that, you know, even our state, our, our, our governing body of, of Virginia High School League Sports um, has, has taken some ownership as well to know that they, you know, they're going to take a stand against, against racial injustice and, uh, and, and, and verbal abuse and things of that nature. Have there been any instances or like a kneeling situation similar to Colin Kaepernick during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner on Friday nights? Uh, no, if, if there has been, I haven't noticed it. We know football is, is a big deal and on Friday nights, now that's the picture of harmony, racial harmony, racial oneness, because it's all in the name of touchdown. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and we all, you know, sometimes we say that, you know, the locker room sees no color. Um, and I, I tell you right now, our... You know, our, our student section at our, at our football games, I mean, obviously the first night we, we had awful weather um, with the remnants of Hurricane Harvey coming up the coast um, and dumping some rain on us. But uh, we still had a strong student section. And uh, then our game last week, it was a beautiful crisp night. Uh, it was clear and uh, definitely had a great turnout for that. Um, and the students had a great time and the football team pulled out a big big win with one of our one of our uh, running backs scoring a touchdown with 40 seconds left to win the game. Sweet. So that, that, that was a great that was a great situation. Now for those who don't know, really describe what Charlottesville is all about, what it means to you because for the outsiders 
you know, outside of like knowing about UVA, it's 